Good evening and welcome to IHW Council's web series on RH negative incompatibility and isoimmunization. I'm Anisha Lair Thavan, and you're watching an exclusive show on RH negative blood group and its impact on pregnancy. Now, a healthy pregnancy is a celebration for the entire family to welcome in a new member. But there are a few things that would be parents should be aware of when they start planning a family. One of these issues is RH incompatibility. This occurs when a pregnant woman whose blood group is RH negative, say for example, B negative, is exposed to the RH positive blood from her fetus, say B positive. Because of this incompatibility, the mother develops RH antibodies, which have the potential to cross the placenta and attach or destroy the fetus's red blood cells. This causes the fetus to become anemic. And in severe cases, the baby may need special blood transfusions called exchange transfusions even before birth, which are called the intrauterine fetal transfusions or maybe even after delivery. So today we're going to talk about RH negative blood group and its impact on pregnancy. And to guide you for this and to answer all your queries on this, we are now joined by Dr. G. Shelja, Professor, Head of Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology She's also retired principal of Osmania Medical College, Hyderabad. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shalja. Thank you, Anisha, for the kind uh, introduction. I hope we can... Before I... Yes, we can hear you uh, loud and clear, ma'am. But before we begin our conversation, I would request our online viewers to keep sending us their queries on the uh, comment box of this live post. And we will try to answer as many questions as we can over the next 30 minutes to type them in. Do like and comment with your feedback and do share this special show uh, with your uh, friends uh, and your family if you think that they will benefit from this. So share it on your wall, share it on their social media handles so that they come to know about this. So uh, let's begin uh, the show, Dr. Shalja, and talk about uh, you know uh, this whole issue about RH incompatibility. Now, I try to explain what I understand about it, but in your practice, since you've been doing this for such a long time, uh, how does this it really show itself? Uh, I would think most people know their blood groups. Uh, is this a problem? Uh, have you seen this in your practice? Do people know their blood group? Do they know? Are they aware about this uh, isoimmunization problem? Not many know about isoimmunization, but most of them know that the blood group has to do something with the condition of the baby later. So most of them, because they come and tell us that I and my husband's blood group is the same. So if it's the same blood group, do we have a problem? That's what they are aware of, but they don't know something as RH negative. But they know there is something in the blood group which causes a problem to the baby. Vaguely, mm -hmm. they know. So we have to tell them that this RH negative, which is also done with your blood group, is very, very important so that it can prevent problems in the progeny. And we have to tell them that they have to know that prevention is always, always better than cure. And this COVID-19 has given us a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of knowledge telling mm -hmm. us how we have to prevent it. We have to be healthy. So similarly, there is a prevention. 100% you can prevent your baby from having all the complications of RH negative isoimmunization. So if you so are aware what, that- What are the complications? And I mean, uh, where does the problem stem from? Is oh, it because... Actually, what uh, happens uh, when the mother is RH positive, for the first time, if she is carrying the baby for the first time, it is hmm. called the primary sensitization. That means if she's carrying an RH, supposing she's carrying an RH negative baby because the husband is positive, she is negative, and the baby is RH positive, the baby's blood, there is um, from the mother, You know, all of us know that the mother supplies blood to the baby and the nutrition, which goes through the blood. And so because the blood the group of the baby is different from the mother, it, they develop some certain uh, uh, antigens. And this antigens will cross back to the mother and they live inside the mother. So the first pregnancy, she won't have any problem because it only sensitizes that. It tells, yeah, there is something different is going on. So the mother knows that there is something different happening and that memory is there in her blood. So the next time she delivers this baby, fine, and she doesn't take any uh, uh, and, uh, prevention of anti-D, 
then mm. when she's pregnant the next time this is there her blood remembers something was different so now mm. the second time again she's pregnant they know this is different so those different cells or the abnormal cells which we call them antibodies they reach the baby through while they are supplying blood these different will they say i am different so they go mm. to the mother and the blood the baby says this is different it's not my mother's and these cells kill the baby's rbcs so the mother cells the baby identifies as not something which is its own which is helping it it mm. these different cells identify the baby as something uh, foreign alien mm. alien or foreign so mm. those cells they kill the rbcs and these different cells which the mother is sensitized the second time is called secondary sense antibody formation and these secondary cells time when they enter the baby's blood they kill they destroy the rbcs babies rbcs which leads to all the complications in the baby so the first time if you are giving a proper uh, prevention injection then the baby won't have complications so another next thing what you would like to know is is it only after delivery do they get sensitized no the first time they get sensitized is one maximum is during the delivery that time a lot of fetal blood goes back to the mother's circulation after the delivery of the placenta so that's why it is maximum during the after delivery of the placenta but in small amounts like you get injected with small amounts you become allergic to small amounts of other articles which you use like deos perfumes anything you get uh, sensitized you get allergies so similarly even in early pregnancy if she has a small bleed supposing she has bleeding and or she aborts even then she can become sensitized all these are called sensitizing risks sensitizing events so any <laughs> any abortion any time and mm. then if they are doing some procedure on her like uh, art procedures where they are the, they are the amniocentesis or if they are doing an abortion or she has an ectopic the pregnancy is on the tube so all these things any procedures done during pregnancy will also can lead to her sensitization so right so ma'am my question is sensitizing events right so ma'am my question is that on, the risk only exists if the mother is rh negative and her baby is rh positive yes so what is the chance that this happens you know um the sensitization uh, happens it could be that her baby is also rh negative so what is the percentage in your practice have you seen that this complication arises in india it is very low around the world it's 15% in india it's only 5 to 8% but even one uh, baby why should we lose even a single baby statistic says it's 8% 5 to 8 but for that family that baby is their only baby or only child so even if it is 5% you say it's very low why should we do all this it is low but for that particular family the whole her obstetric history is gone she may not be able to have a, a healthy baby or a normal baby so though it is only 5 to 8% and we have means to prevent it why should we not use it so when we can and it's very low in india it's of course low but right other places so um you said that uh, this sensitization happens when uh, a little of the baby's blood mixes with the mother's blood which uh, the chance is high during a natural normal delivery uh, is the same risk there when a mother undergoes a cesarean and her baby has rh positive and she is rh negative yes any any delivery be it cesarean or normal or you apply a forceps or vent tube and even if the baby dies in utero if it is a death even if the baby is born dead also this happens and not only delivery even it happens even if it's an early abortion even if it's 8 weeks 10 weeks 12 weeks 14 weeks abortion or if she just has some pain uterine contractions so we call it uterine cramps even if for no reason suddenly they may have uterine cramping of the uterus and if this cramping causes pain that little contraction of the uterus also can lead to the fetal blood going into the mixing with the mother's blood and cause sensitization so any small event also can cause this as simple as a uterine contraction 
throughout any time during pregnancy. Um, uh, what about spotting or uh, a little bit of bleeding during pregnancy? Some women have, you know, they've carried something heavy and suddenly a little yes, bit of spotting any happens. spotting, any bleeding, any, uh, even if, even, even if she doesn't have bleeding, even if she has cramps, mm -hmm. then also there is uh, sensitivity. A risk. Okay. So ma'am, um, you said that the first pregnancy, usually there is no complication. It, yes. it is during that time that the, there is sensitization that happens of the mother's blood. So then when is uh, the step to be taken so that such a complication doesn't arise in a subsequent pregnancy? Yeah. Is it after the delivery? Is it after you have conceived? <clears throat> when is this preventive step taken? So there are two things in pregnancy. One is the antenatal prophylaxis and the other is postnatal prophylaxis. Antenatal means during the pregnancy, any time. So we don't know, you miss that you have some contractions, but you don't uh, tell your doctor and the doctor doesn't ask you, did you have pain? Uh, you think it's some abdominal pain or some gastritis and you fail to mention to your doctor, but it still there is some immunized, a sensitization occurs. All these occur, these occur after the 28th week of pregnancy, if there is no bleeding also. So when it is there, you have to give, that's why we give it during uh, her pregnancy around the uh, eighth month of pregnancy, 32 weeks and one, and one is after delivery. So even and this is the subsequent pregnancy, right? The yes. second pregnancy. No, first pregnancy itself. Okay. First pregnancy, we give it to prevent for the second pregnancy. If you already have sensitized in the first pregnancy, you're already immunized and your uh, entity will not work when you give it doesn't uh, reduce the drugs or destroy the already bad cells. It can only prevent it becoming bad. It cannot destroy the bad things. The cells are bad. The yeah, but ma'am, during the first pregnancy, how do you know the blood group of the child? How do you know that there will be a sensitization that happens? Because yes, you can prevent still the, in the sensitization uterus. by giving this entity even in the antenatal period and also in the postnatal period. Both. You can prevent sensitization 99.5%, almost. But ma'am, you're saying that you would take this preventive action without knowing the baby's blood group. Yes, that is antenatally without knowing, postnatally after knowing. But in some cases, in some places, supposing you are, uh, you cannot make, a, you can't do the baby's blood group. Supposing there is no facility or midnight and you can't get it done or there's some problem. You can't then, if you know the father's blood group, father is positive, mother is negative. So there is a 50% chance that the baby must be positive. So we don't want to take the risk of the next pregnancy getting sensitized. So in few cases, we give entity, even though we don't have the facility to do the baby's uh, blood group. But routinely, it is a must that you get the baby's blood group done if the baby is positive within 24 hours. As soon as possible after delivery, you give the entity to the mother. But if you can't get the blood group report within a day, doesn't mean you should not give. You can give it up to one week because the first time the sensitization occurs very slowly, not like in the second pregnancy where it is very, very rapid. And in the first sensitization, you need a little more blood for sensitization. Whereas in the secondary, when the second pregnancy, as small as 0 0.05 ml blood also can give rise to large number of antibodies, which can kill the RBCs. All right, ma'am, we've started getting some queries from viewers. A Facebook user is asking, can RH negative cause complications during pregnancy? Now you spoke about complications, but can you tell us how does this impact the fetus and is there any impact on the mother's health as well? Yeah, in, in RH pre negative pregnancy, if the mother is already, that is in the second, pre first pregnancy, there will not be any problem either for the mother or the baby. But if she hasn't taken her anti-D or then she is sensitized. Then the second pregnancy, the baby will be the first one to be affected. And whatever the baby has, the problems the baby has, we call it a mirror effect on the mother. The similar things will happen to the mother. Baby's enemy, baby mother will be enemy. And mother will have hypertension. Mother will have uh, blood pressure. 
and then she will have a lot of swelling. Baby also will swell up and we call it the hydrops vitalis because there's a lot of fluid filled inside the baby. So similarly, there'll be uh, edema, swelling of the feet, face, abdomen in the mother. So it's a mirror image in the mother. So what, whatever the baby suffers, some similarly it happens to the mother from the second pregnancy if she's not taken her entity definitely she will suffer she will have first she will have uh, the first second child will be born alive but the baby will have congenital anomalies she may be born blind deaf mute or uh, some absence of any organ all these any congenital abnormality or she can have less intelligent quotient she can be cerebral palsy anything can happen and she, the baby can become very severely jaundiced after baby is born and if the jaundice is more than 19 it will affect the baby's brain and the baby can have convulsions and the baby's uh, intelligence is reduced so the baby can become less autism or slow learner <coughs> so many things can occur in the baby if you don't treat that jaundice immediately right Ma'am, uh, another Facebook user is asking, why does RH incompatibility occur in a woman? Is, is the condition, ma'am, the question is, why does RH incompatibility occur in a woman? Is the condition fatal for both mother and child? How serious is this? Okay, it's not fatal for the mother, but it is fatal for the child. It is fatal. It for could the be child. fatal. Yeah, it could be fatal depending upon the degree of the antibodies degree of how much the baby is anemic. For that, we have a lot of investigations we do and the mother is pregnant when we know she tells us she hasn't taken her antity in the previous pregnancy. Uh -huh. So this pregnancy, we do a lot of tests for the mother we, to know whether really the baby is affected or not. So luckily, God has helped us also. 53%, even if they are sensitized, the baby is unaffected. 53% of child children born to sensitized women's, women will be unaffected. The other 50%, only 47% are affected. So we have a lot of tests now, which we do right from the time she is pregnant. We do the, go on repeating those blood tests. Mm. And we know and we can pinpoint when the baby is getting affected and how much the baby is affected with our uh, uh, scans, Test. Doppler and blood mm. tests. We know how much the baby is affected, when it's affected, whether it is the same, whether the readings are the same, then it is not progressing. The disease is okay. not progressing. If your titers are higher and higher levels you get, you know the disease is progressing. So we know what to treat. There are a lot of treatments available even before the baby is born and after the baby is born. Right. Ma'am, another question that is coming is, does knowing your partner's blood type before marriage help in avoiding this condition? No, before marriage, yes, it's good to know the blood group, but it will not avoid the sensitization. Sensitization will be, occur only in pregnancy and you can avoid it only by immunization. There's nothing which will prevent the immunization, uh, getting it sensitized except immunization. Right, but I think the question is that uh, should you then consider the blood group of your partner? Because, you know, in the end, it, 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 it's important, but it, should it be a, cho a factor in making a choice? Because in the end, you, you are saying that this can be prevented by taking the steps at the right time. Yeah. So if she can get hold of a RH negative partner, fine, then she won't have this problem. So All right. I mean, you want to, like you match horoscopes, you match your blood groups. <laughs> right. Uh, Matma, we have a question uh, coming in from another mm -hmm. user. Can an RH negative man and an RH positive woman conceive a child with medical intervention? I mean, is medical intervention needed? If, if the mother is uh, positive, is there no. ever any problem? There will not be a problem. If the mother is RH negative only, the problem occurs. If the mother is RH uh, positive, there, there is no problem. Uh, Ma'am, to... Do such patients, the way the woman is uh, RH positive and the man is RH negative, need any medical intervention for a pregnancy? No, not for RH sensitization. Maybe some other causes that they have, but for mm -hmm. they will not have an RH sensitized pregnancy and their babies will not be having any problems. Right. 
Now another question coming in from a user is, can anti-D shot prevent further pregnancy loss? The, I, the assumption perhaps is that, you know, uh, one underwent a pregnancy loss and wouldn't want something like this to happen again. And maybe yes. the pregnancy loss is because of the uh, RH uh, incompatibility. So supposing she is not sensitized, it will prevent the loss. But if she's already sensitized, RH anti-D will not help. So we have to catch them early before the red cells are coated with these anti antigens. Before right. they are sensitized, only then only the anti-D will help. That's why we are not taking a chance and we're giving the anti-D even during pregnancy after the 30th, the 30th, 32nd to 34th week. And we repeat it again after delivery. Right. And this, uh, which you're giving during 32 weeks and after delivery, will protect the, uh, the baby, protect, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, if Supposing she's sensitized because she had some bleeding or some contractions, even if we give after, many, there are many women who come back to us. I took, they uh, deliver in corporate hospitals and they say, I have taken the anti-D, total anti-D. But still, I am having this sensitization and now I am I'm losing this baby. Then we ask them, did you take in the antenatal period? They say no. If they don't take during the antenatal period, they can still 5 to 10% have, in spite of taking a post after delivery, taking the anti-D, they can still have the problem of, uh, of sensitization. Losing. Yes, sensitization and baby being affected. In spite then, of what taking is the post here? Yeah, then what is the course? As a mother, I did all that I, I could do. I took the entity after I delivered my first child. Yes, Perhaps the sensitization enough. wasn't long enough, but I don't want to lose my second child. So what do I do? She's already sensitized. So we, you know, we have to treat, I mean, uh, do all the Anticipate precautions, pregnancy. do the test, deliver her early, or we have to give the baby transfusions when the baby is in the womb or deliver them early and do the exchange transfusion after delivery. Because once they are sensitized, it's out of our hands. We have to treat and take a chance. That's why so antenatal routine, antenatal prophylaxis is very, very as important as after death. Right. So ma'am, can you explain how you manage pregnancies where, you know, the mother is sensitized and uh, yeah. the baby could get affected or is getting affected? How, how are these pregnancies managed? So now, uh, this lady comes to me, she says, I, I have done the blood group and she's RH negative. And she told me she has delivered in her village and she didn't take any injections. She didn't know that she was RH negative. Then we do a blood test for her called in, uh, indirect Coombs test, whether it's positive or negative, as soon as she comes, even if six weeks, eight weeks. So we see whether it is positive or negative. If it is negative, we are sure that she has not yet been sensitized. And this test, we have to repeat it every two months. I repeat it in the second month, fourth month, sixth month, eighth month. And supposing suddenly she becomes positive, the test becomes positive when she is in the eighth month. Then I know that she is RH negative. She didn't get her anti-D done. So this test, I repeat every two months. Second is from the... 22 weeks from the fifth month after the fifth month of pregnancy, we do what is called as the ultrasound scan and the Doppler for the baby. In the Doppler, we see the blood flow through the baby. And one particular vessel, we see the blood flow through that. And if that blood flow is suddenly increasing in velocity, then we know that the baby is getting affected. So that we repeat every three weeks if she's normal. And if she's positive, we do it more often. And then depending upon that score, there are scores. We have scores 1.3, 1.5. So depending upon that score, we then decide when to deliver the baby, whether to wait till the baby is ninth month or early. So depending upon that velocity of that blood flow score, we uh, deliver the baby early or if it is very high and she's only eight month, 32 weeks, we can't deliver. Even after delivery, we cannot save the baby. 28 weeks, if she's a 28 weeker, and the blood flow will, or PSV, we call it, if it is very high, more than 1.5, we, uh, we have to give the transfusion while the baby is in the utero. So in utero, we can give maximum of three transfusions to the child, baby, fetus mm -hmm. rather. 
then supposing this 1.5 is reached after she is 35, 36 weeks, we know it is 1.3, 1.4. So we know it is increasing. So we deliver her earlier by 36 weeks, do the serum bilirubin for the baby in the baby and then give an exchange transfusion. We remove that blood and give good blood. So the baby will thrive. So the later you deliver the baby, the later this PSV rises, the baby has a better chance of survival. The earlier they have the problem, prematurity is a major problem all of us know. And all of this can be prevented if the anti G is taken up to the All these complications in the mother, in the baby, can be prevented by just two doses, just like we say, do boond of uh, polio. Polio drops. Yes. yes, like that. It is two doses of anti D for every Irish negative pregnant woman. If that is our slogan, we can eradicate this. Prevent, right. prevent, totally prevent. Prevent it, right. Only and we have another we have one uh, or two causes where we can't prevent is supposing mm -hmm. this, uh, like uh, this patient, when she was in her mother's womb and her mother had some uh, unknown transfusion, Irish positive or uh, transfusion, then that baby would have been sensitized when she was in the utero itself. So that what we call is grandmother's theory. Very rare, 0.001%, that is one. And the other is if she has some rare blood groups, Duffy and Fluff, F and E, those are the, some rare subgroups they have. These are the mm -hmm. women which we won't know. We, can't, we won't know that immediately we just do Irish negative. We don't, we don't look for these rare blood groups. But if there is a doubt, then you look for rare blood groups. I may have another question. Both husband and wife's blood group is A positive. Will there be any issue in conceiving and pregnancy or any complication during pregnancy? No, not at all. They may. ABO blood group incompatibility may be there, but not RH. Okay. They won't have any issues because of the blood groups. Rather. All right. Um, another question is, when would one need to get an antibody screening done? As soon as they are pregnant. First is as soon as they are pregnant. Eight and ma'am, what information does this antibody screening reveal? We, they'll tell you whether you're sensitized or not. And then if right. we have a doubt you're sensitized, we do it the same test. We do it in dilutions. In which dilution is it positive? So that helps us in the treatment. We have a critical uh, level. <clears throat> I have another question being asked by a user is, are there any side effects of anti-D? Not that uh, we know of. There are no major side effects, nor minor, maybe very, very rare. You might have an anaphylactic reaction, some rash or a little mild fever but not any serious, no, not like penicillin where we have very severe reactions. Right. So ma'am, um, <clears throat> for women who present themselves for delivery in institutional setups, uh, are they willing to take this if they are RH negative? Yes. If you explain to them, these are the problems, they definitely, but you have to tell them why they have to take it. What mm -hmm. are the problems? Then they take it. Some people, they say, I'm not going to conceive again. I want only one child. So why should I take? Because I'm not going mm. to have my... But yes. then we, they, supposing sometimes they might need a blood transfusion what in future. So then mm. they will have the hassle of uh, incompatible uh, blood transfusions. They might have reactions. So it is always better they take the antibody. All right. They may be sensitized and this sensitization they may not be able to get a proper blood group later on in life when they need. Or sometime later you change your mind, you want a second child. Then you have the problem. So even if you don't want to conceive again, it is preferable for your health to take it. All right. So ma'am, uh, these are women who present themselves in institutional setups and you are able to give them uh, anti-D after yes. delivery. But you know, in India still many births happen at home, uh, midwives assist and here, you know, there may be no investigation to find this out. Uh, and then suddenly if 
they come to you in an institutional setup and they themselves don't know then i mean how do you help these people see now uh, the government has lot of schemes like janani suraksha and all these schemes where the pregnant woman there are uh, these uh, uh, anganwadi nurses anms who go home house to house the sarpanch they are under the sarpanch and they make all the home visits and with they have the antenatal card where blood group is stated as necessity this lady collects the blood and sends it to the blood bank or wherever whichever district hospital and they get the blood test done and each most of the phcs have doctors and they have mobile uh, uh, vans mobile dispensaries where they go to the remotest of places now everybody like how they know about polio they know about blood group they know about tetanus which is given in uh, for the pregnant woman so the similarly whichever doctor whoever is there in the rural areas they also know that there is something called mismatch blood they may not know rh negative but they know there is some change or some problem with the mother and the father's blood group which causes the babies to die or the causes the baby to have some congenital anomaly so not much but at least 60% know about it in the rural areas also so mm-hmm. i feel that there is the government has to take it up in a larger way just like we took up the polio campaign way back 20 25 years ago so ma'am if a campaign has to be done then uh, does it only target women who are rh negative how is a campaign then done how can well, this is our attempt to create awareness but uh, if it is coming from the government side uh, it will it uh, say that get your blood group tested know your blood group and you know then take if you plan a family then speak to your doctor our doctors also aware of this condition and proactively ask patients you know what's your yes. blood group and it's like that does uh, antenatal checkups know that blood group rh typing is mandatory is essential and you can prevent lot of problems because of that every doctor and most of the rmps and other uh, alternative medicine uh, your ayush everybody knows about this in antenatal care and uh, because you have those antenatal cards where blood group is essential but the only thing is they don't have the husband's blood group that also if it is included in those cards mother's blood group father's blood group then it will be much easier to so, know right ma'am you said that uh, you know um uh, to if uh, to find out if the mother is sensitized or not you run tests every two months yes so uh, then the patient will have to present themselves to an institutional setup very But often they come every month for an antenatal checkup isn't it okay so all, uh, and they they already would have uh, had they know that once they come the first time we tell them that you didn't take your antidi so you may have these complications and your baby you can have any problem with your baby also once we tell them they can have a complication with their baby they do come more often and okay. it's not more often one month this antenatal checkup and this we are doing only once in two months okay all right uh ma'am ma- um, can you explain to us how these tests uh, assess if there is a, a sensitivity issue uh you said it this is the indirect wounds test yes uh what are the readings which are what is um, you so, the, how often have you seen these readings very high uh in case a woman has not received antid uh where what is the percentage of complications that rise because of this sensitization percentage of com- so once they are sensitized it's 100% complications so if it is positive okay. she is definitely going to have the complications may be minor major minimal moderate severe mm. but if she is sensitized she is definitely going to have complications so we have seen uh, the place where i worked is a, p- a pediatric and a high risk maternity hospital so we had lot of cases of uh, rh negative where they didn't take the antity and they come back positive even today even today mm. i have a lady who did not take and she had three miscarriages after that and now she's come for the fourth time and the last uh, baby also was high drops they didn't recognize she was in the village she couldn't whatever her reasons were now she has decided to come 
and get investigated. All this time she didn't want to come for even the investigations. So it is, but once you're sensitized, you are bound to have complications for the baby, whether they are severe, moderate, that depends on the degree of sensitization. That's why the first thing is we do is the indirect combs. First, we see whether it's positive, negative. If it is positive, we do it in dilutions to see if it is increasing. So critical is one in 16. If it is above one in 16, we know that she's going to have, definitely going to have. If it is less than that, she may not have complications. She may just have jaundice. We have to prevent jaundice in the baby after the mm -hmm. baby is born. So we deliver them much earlier. We don't wait till she finishes 40 weeks. Right. So ma'am, a mild case is where the child has joined us, which can be treated post delivery. Yes. Post and a severe one is um, the hydrops case, right? Severe is hydrops in utero. So now latest we can we have is the in utero exchange transfusion. While the baby, and how does that happen? So while the baby, under ultrasound guided, we put in a needle through the baby's groin vessel, through the placenta, and we uh, search for the, through the vein in the placenta. One vein, we take out the blood. The other one, we push in fresh blood, 2.5 to 5 ml of the blood. Depending, there are various factors which we have to take into account. The hemoglobin of the baby and what is her PSV value, what is the bilirubin, what is the uh, uh, hematocrit count and other, a lot of parameters are there. And we do the exchange while uh, ultrasound guided. Very few centers do it. All right. Ma'am, how, how are these parameters assessed for the baby? Does this involve invasive tests again or is They're this found out? They have to draw blood from the umbilicus of the baby using the ultrasound. And then each test, we when we draw blood, it's an invasive. So before each test, again, we have to give antidote. <clears throat> All right. Um, and ma'am, um, are these facilities to give intrauterine transfusion readily available these days in our country or are they only yeah, they restricted areas? In all the major metropolitan cities, it's available in Bombay, Hyderabad, Calcutta, Delhi. In the major cities, yes, one of one center or two centers may. One center or two centers in the city, they're very expensive and the outcome is not very, you know, very happy with the outcome. All right. So the best way out actually is to take the anti D at the right time. Yes. Instead of going through all these complications, which we don't know, because we are going to treat a very tiny baby, maybe not even one kg. If she's 28 weeks, that the baby is hardly 900 grams baby. So if you treat a 900 grams baby, we know we are going to end up with a lot of complications. Complications during the uh, infusion and later on. And then even if she's born at term with severe jaundice, again, we have to give transfusion every day. We have to look at the serum bilirubin, prevent the convulsions. So all these problems are going to take a toll on the parents and the baby. Child. <laughs> right. Prevent. All these are prevented. Right. With just two shots of anti. All are preventable. It's not like that. Even if you give, we cannot give it. Like, they are all prevent. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Sharja, for joining us uh, and answering all the questions that you've taken up today. It's a, uh, it's a big relief that the anti-D is so effective. And thank you so much for explaining to everyone the critical importance of this anti-D for RH negative women. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I hope uh, I could clear all your doubts and you did understand what I was trying to tell you. So if yes. you, you or your, any of your friends or relatives are, you, they know that the blood group is RH negative, please go and meet any doctor. They'll be able to tell you how to prevent the problems. Just two doses of antity, one during pregnancy after uh, at 30 weeks and not 32, 34, if, even if you're a little late, it's okay. And then one immediately after delivery, you will be safe, your baby will be safe and your future pregnant Pregnancies also will be safe. Not only now, All right. later pregnancies also. Thank you so much. All right, Dr. Shelza, thank you so much for joining us. 
and answering all the questions that you've taken up. So that was Dr. Shelja answering all your questions on our Rich Negative blood group. If you have any more questions, you can send them to us uh, through WhatsApp. Just click on the WhatsApp uh, button on our page and send us your questions. Uh, we can take them up in our next show. And don't forget to follow us to stay updated on all the concerns about health and well-being. This program was supported by Bharat Serums and Vaccines Limited under its Public Awareness Initiative. We'll be back with a special show on RH Negative Incompatibility next week. Do follow us on Facebook. To get all the updates on our upcoming uh, shows, uh, do keep sending us all your questions and we will certainly include them in our shows. Till then, stay at home and uh, take care and stay safe. Goodbye and see you soon.